Thanks for checking out the video. Today we're going to take a look at Thomas Paine's Common Sense, a pamphlet which is going to articulate in writing the reason why the American Revolution and independence is the only way it was common sense for the colonists to pursue that as a goal. And it was one of the most influential pamphlets in this part of American history. Now we got to go back because remember French and Indian War 1754 to 1763 also called the Seven Years War had created huge changes for England and the colonies and largely England's broke, France is gone and as a result they initiate all these new policies which inevitably leads to trouble. What you really need to realize is it was a very slow move towards independence. Um, in fact, remember there was this attempt by the English to try to reduce problems with the Native Americans. They don't want the colonists going into Native territory. Remember, Pontiac's Rebellion caused all sorts of havoc. You know, they're in debt, so they start enforcing all these new taxes and enforcing old ones as well. No more solitary neglect. We're not going to go into detail, but make sure you know those things. And then, of course, we have the shot heard round the world, the Battle of Lexington and Concord in April of 1775. Keep in mind, these are the opening shots of the American Revolution in April 1775. We haven't declared independence. You know, you also have the Second Continental Congress, their meeting in the summer of 1775, you know, having discussions. But important to keep in mind, they're not calling for independence. There's a small group of radicals, but largely they're trying to patch things up. They do raise funds for the Continental Army. They bring the homie, Jorge Washington, name him as the commander, but still no independence. You have the Battle of Bunker Hill in June of 1775, a significant battle because the colonists are defeated, but they prove that they're capable of fighting and standing up to the British military. Um, Battle of Bunker Hill, once again, still no independence being declared. You even have, in July, the Second Continental Congress sending over a, hey, King George, let's just, like, work this thing out, man. We got some grievances. Help us out. Like, we, we want to be a part of the English Empire. Here's our problems. Let's sort it out. And King George basically says, nah, we're good. We're not going to listen to you. In fact, in August, he declares the colonies are in open rebellion. In fact, he even hires German mercenary soldiers shortly after these events. And so what you need to realize is that there is a gradual movement towards independence. It doesn't just spark out of nowhere. And this is important for you to know. You know, we have this vision as Americans that somehow we just believed in independence from the start. Bald eagles, American flags, testosterone, tough guys, tough women, and we were down for independence from the moment the taxes hit. We were rebelling. We had our dogs decorated with patriotic gear. We were eating hot dogs that said USA on them, and of course, we're washing it all down with the most patriotic cake you could ever eat. This is not true. In fact, unlike some guys and girls today, these colonies were loyal. These girls ain't loyal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a huge number of the colonists were loyal to England. And not because they were punks, but keep in mind, loyalty was deeply ingrained. That's all they ever knew. England was the mama. It's the mother country. And ever since the first colonies were established in 1607 with Jamestown, and all the way through, England's been the boss. They believe they're part of the British Empire. They, they genuinely believe they see themselves as British citizens. Another thing to keep in mind, really important, is colonial unity was very poor. Remember what happened during the French and Indian War, the Albany Plan, trying to, Ben Franklin trying to get these colonies on the same page, ultimately fails. And so these colonists are all very, you know, independent. They, they don't have a shared history with one another, and probably kind of something we don't really consider, rebellion. You know, we could like 
go to jail for this? It was dangerous. It was treason. And you can get killed if you're doing this. So there is a slow movement towards independence. Now, oh wait, I got the wrong lecture. Enter a guy by the name of T-Pain, the original T-Pain, and unlike that T-Pain, he wasn't buying drinks at the bar, he was writing about freedom. And T-Pain, he actually was over in England, 1774, he comes to the colonies, shows up in Philadelphia, kind of homies with Benjamin Franklin. He meets with other colonists, and he's heavily influenced by the Enlightenment. You know, the Enlightenment had been going on over in Europe, and it had trickled across the Atlantic Ocean in the ideas and the books and the things that people are talking about, especially, especially the elite. And Thomas Paine really questions the legitimacy of the monarchy. And he really is a product of this Enlightenment thinking. You know, this idea that the power of human reason to understand and shape the world. That's kind of the essence of the Enlightenment. And so he is in the colonies in 1774. And in 1775, he starts writing a, a pamphlet. And this pamphlet's going to be a game changer. And here's why. January, it drops. It's like I'm fighting for freedom. Fighting for freedom is... January 1776, it hits the colonies. Now keep this in mind. At first, it's published anonymously. What he's doing, what he's writing is dangerous. You don't want to put your name on that. That's, that's, just, that's just not too smart. It's 48 pages long, and in essence, common sense is all about the fact that it is common sense for these colonies to declare themselves independent. So it drops and hits in the colonies. It's a huge success. It goes through something like 25 editions in a matter of a year. Hundreds of thousands of people are influenced by it. Um, and it's a radical pamphlet. Um, it's broken down into four sections. And the audience of Common Sense is really important. The audience is ordinary, regular folk in the colonies. He wants this thing to hit those people and these ideas articulated in it are going to appeal to the masses. You know, even if you could not read, it was read aloud in taverns and other town halls, and people were being inspired by the words of Thomas Paine. Now, what did he say in it? Don't put me, boy. I ain't said nothing yet. And he did say a lot of something, actually. And he did so and clear and simple language. Um, I like to think that if Tom, Thomas Paine was alive with Twitter, he would be the most awesome tweeter out there. Is that what you call a tweeter? I don't even know. You know, just look at that quote. We may as well assert that because a child has thrived upon milk, that it is never to have meat. The, the imagery of the, the colonies as children and England as the bad mother is a big part of this document that is a cornerstone of American identity and independence movement. Very emotional language. It's accessible to the people. And let me just kind of break down some of his big ideas in here. Keep in mind, January of 1776, there's already fighting going on. Bunker Hill, Lexington, Concord. But still a lot of people are uncertain of this independence thing. There's some radicals talking about it, but for the most part, people are on the fence. Here's what Thomas Paine says. A couple of ideas. One, an island can't run a continent. England's way over there. They're an island. There's no way. It doesn't make any sense for us to be connected to them. Two, you know, we had a lot of immigrants coming into the colonies, the Scots, Irish, German immigrants. You know, we weren't just a British set of people. And as a result, it didn't make sense for us to be a colony any longer. Three, England's the mother country, but we all growns up now. It's all time now for us to branch out on our own. Four, being a colony dragged us into all sorts of wars and kept us from being able to trade with all such sorts of countries such as France, Spain, for instance. You know, the mercantilist policies and we just kind of got mixed up in all sorts of things because of our relationship with England. Five, England's super far. And if we're going to have, you know, problems, if we want to holler at par Parliament about some issues, 
It's going to take forever to get those things resolved because of the distance. Six, you know what? Our interest, our, co our colonial interests are always subordinate to England. And so therefore, it just didn't make sense. And there were other arguments in it, but in essence, those were some of the key ones. Now, the colonial elite were largely familiar with these ideas, but what common sense does is it brings it to the masses. You know, in common sense, he even calls the king a royal brute of Great Britain. There's some fighting words. And so this thing, this document, is a radical piece of propaganda. And here are some other quotes. But Britain is the parent country, say some, then the more shame upon her conduct. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine, I challenge the warmest advocate for reconciliation to show a single advantage that this continent can reap by being connected with Great Britain. Should an island rule a continent? Reconciliation and ruin are nearly related. Tis time to part. So the language of this document is very revolutionary. And it convinces a lot of people that independence is the next step. It's common sense to think so. Now keep in mind, Thomas Paine is not writing all original ideas. These are radical ideas, but they're a product of the Enlightenment. And he doesn't, in this pamphlet, just talked about independence. There's also a call for a new style of government and the nature of government. And one of the things he says is, government should be a republic where we elect people to represent us. Calls for a republic, a new political society in which people elect their leaders based upon consent. That the leadership, the, the, the government, gets its powers because of consent of the governed. Now, this is John Locke speaking. You know, Thomas Paine, John Locke, those are both thinkers of this period, the Enlightenment. Locke talked about a lot of this idea, the idea of consent, natural rights, and of course, the other thing that Thomas Paine touches on in this document is power in government comes from power to the people. Power to the people. People. This idea of popular consent. And like I said, John Locke, he wrote the, the two treaties of government and Paine's influenced by this, but what he does is he brings it down so that the average colonist could can really grapple and understand these ideas. Now, what you need to keep in mind, and this is why it's important to know the history before common sense, is that the pamphlet hits the streets in January of 1776, and it finds a very receptive audience. People are listening because they had begun to be fed up. You know, remember, there was a lot of trouble. And if you're studying for a class, make sure you know the reasons, the political and the economic restrictions placed on the colonies and what the colonies did to try to counter that. But what happens is, after all these events are going on, you're going to see the colonies beginning to fight back and roar. <laughs> In fact, T-Pain's common sense is going to dramatically increase the support for this idea of independence. We don't know numbers. There were no census or polls being taken uh, down, but we do know it had a profound impact. And the wild thing is, is while these intellectuals, these elites, these Thomas Jefferson, these Thomas Paines, these Sam Adamses, these John Adamses, while they're talking... People are dying ever since April of 1775, so we don't declare independence until, of course, July, but the American Revolution was being fought at the same time we were trying to negotiate. It's one of the crazy things about American history, and I hope you learned some stuff about Thomas Paine and the bigger idea of independence. And of course, as always, tap that and you subscribe, tap that and get a five, tap that. Tell your friends, tap that, oh. That is the worst attempt at trying to get you to subscribe to the channel. Please stop me from rapping by subscribing so I don't have to go back into the rap game. Thank you for watching. Peace.